Welcome to Andrew Says, everybody. This is Rachel Maddow for The Rachel Maddow Show. WWE went to Saudi Arabia on Friday, which they have a contract with them to go there many, many times between now and 2030. Now, if you didn't know, they already went there once er earlier this year, and it was kind of weird. But the problem I have here is now that the journalist has been killed, there's this big controversy around whether or not the WWE should have went in the first place. But like I said, this isn't the first time they've gone there. So all of a sudden there's this big controversy as if Saudi Arabia wasn't some horrible regime that's oppressing women before this. And it's not just a virtue signal, it's just that like Saudi Arabia is messed up, okay? There, I don't think there's any, any uh, discrepancy here. They treat their women poorly, they have blasphemy laws, and I'm happy, I'm happy with the fact that they're being scrutinized more. But the fact that this is all just acting like before everything was honky-dory and now we're just going to Saudi Arabia and it's a problem starting like last week or whenever and they've clearly tried to you know sneakily work their way in there barely mentioning it removing promotions for it it's become a problem and now it's it's suspicious as to why it's all of a sudden just a problem that's the first point very sweet graphic there for number two brings me to my second point the women the women of wwe having the ba their backs been turned on them so wwe has been pushing women's wrestling, the whole women's revolution for a good couple years now. And they're t telling us week by week how great the women are. And that's fine. There are some great women wrestlers. I do enjoy watching some of them. And they even had their own pay-per-view recently, um, just as <laughs> little as last week. That's how long it's been. And now, for the second time in Saudi Arabia, we can't have any women wrestle. Why? Because it's Saudi Arabia. And sorry, ladies, uh, you've done so much for us. You've done... Uh, great things you've broken glass ceilings and we're very proud of you but uh, we can't we can't have you showing any skin because that's disgusting and we don't want to upset any Saudi Arabian oil princes and we don't want to upset any people who think that you need to be covered and what I'd like to know is where are the feminists on this topic we've got a ton of people in the media talking about how evil Saudi Arabia is but we don't talk about why that is we can't bring up that they are actually anti-women but over here in America, it's so bad. Women don't have any rights. But at a place where we can't have women wrestling because we can't have their skin showing, uh, well, we won't talk about that. Point number three. Not only is this a slap in the face to the WWE women's wrestlers and their young female fans who want to see them, it's a slap in the face to all fans in general. Why? Because of who they're bringing back specifically for Saudi Arabia. So in the build-up here, we've had Degeneration X, which is a huge brand for them, historically one of their top-selling merchandises and best viewed most viewed wrestling groups and as well as hulk hogan they brought the old man back for saudi arabia now why is that bad why because why isn't it going to brooklyn why isn't it going to chicago why isn't it going to toronto or the uk probably the most loyal places for wrestling fans to show up and support people but no there are no build-up matches there are no special events for uh, wrestling fans who supported them over the years, it goes right to Saudi Arabia for a few million dollars. And this is not a knock on the fans of Saudi Arabia. They deserve to have entertainment. They deserve to have the ability to go to a normal event. So it's not about them. It's the fact that Saudi Arabia, the oppressive regime, who's got horrible atrocities on their side, they get to see Hulk Hogan for the first time in years. They get to see The Undertaker versus Degeneration X like it's 1999 and my 10-year-old self, or however old I was, would love to see them. No, Saudi Arabia, that's who gets it. And I get that money talks and everything, but come on, you're, you're slapping your fans in the face and saying that you don't care about them and that this extra few million dollars is all you care about. That brings me to dearest Daniel Bryan and Hollywood superstar John Cena. Both of them refuse to go. Refuse to go, which is great, I guess, that they are saying, no, we don't want to go to Saudi Arabia. We don't want to be a part of this. But here's the point. They, di they didn't care the first time. Uh, the first time WWE went to Saudi Arabia, there was no stand. There was no freaky stand. Uh, we weren't stopping people from going, no. John Cena went the first time, if you recall. And now, this is probably what happened. Now that John Cena is a big actor in Hollywood. He probably had a phone call with Vince McMahon just like this. Um, hello, Vince. John Cena here. I work in Hollywood. And as you know, they are quite left-leaning. And if I hope to get casted ever again, I'm going to have to sit this one out. I hope you understand. 
And then Vince McMahon is like, all right, John, uh, it's all right. Uh, we got paid $100 million anyway, so uh, you can sit this one out. I support it. And that brings me to China. WWE has been pushing this big promotion in China, John Cena being there, and I'd show it for you right now if the WWE copyright people wouldn't drone strike me right now, but they would. So they got a big deal there. John Cena's even speaking Mandarin, and China, who's got people in work camps, they've got their new wonderful social point system, where if you're caught doing anything the government disapproves of in public, you're going to lose your score and not have the luxuries of a regular person, a.k.a. a free and open society. But this is just fine and dandy for everyone, isn't it? Uh, nothing wrong with China. So is there going to be a big stink about it the next time people go to China in WWE? I don't think so. Because there's a glaring hypocrisy here where the media gets to decide what we should be upset about. The media, and I don't mean everyone, of course. I mean the establishment media like the CNNs and the Washington Post and the New York Times. Who, who, have, who have been pushing this thing with Kasagi, and that's fine, you shouldn't kill journalists, but what one, what does wrestling have to do to do with it? Two, all of a sudden we can't do business with countries who are bad? So where's the, cons and the third point is, where's the consistency here? Are we going to shut them down or chastise them for going to China, who is not the worst country in the world by any means, but a social score? Um, color me not impressed by that, because it's ridiculous. The overall theme here is what is okay and what's not okay. And I think it's all of it's okay or none of it's okay. And yes, there are different levels. China is not Saudi Arabia, but China's still pretty bad. Why can't we work with Brazil more? Why can't we work with Western Europe or Japan or Korea more instead of China and Saudi Arabia? Because this is the mess that we get ourselves in. We're okay with taking business from them and making money with them. But when it comes to a wrestling event, we can't go there. Make up your mind, and I want to know what you think. Would you rather condemn these countries but still work with them, or would you rather completely shun them out and have us deal with people who are only like-minded in freedom, who only want freedom of speech, and who treat their citizens properly?